Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, so, yeah, in terms of activity, it was a pretty calm week. Um, so the first topic that I want to cover is the Amazon account that we are using in a Jenkins project. As a reminder, we have two main costs there, uh, the machine package, the Jenkins IO, and the second one is the CI environment uh, for uh, the agent for CI, the Jenkins IO. Um, with the work that Damien has been doing on CI to Jenkins, we, we, we transfer part, part of the cost from um, the Azure account to, to, to Amazon. And we are now investigating ways to reduce the cost because the last month was um, $50,000 uh, uh, for, for, for this month. And obviously, we have to put down that that, that invoice. Um, so we are currently looking for ways to reduce the cost. And, yeah, basically that that's it. If you have ideas, want to contribute, um, we are so, either, yes. Sorry, I need to catch up there. So last month's spend, we were at a 50K spend? Yes. Wow, okay, and that's on AWS? Yes, exactly. Okay. We saw so an increase on CI Jenkins IO mainly since the beginning of the summer. Uh, the issue uh, infra 3097 has a bunch of details. I've extracted a lot of the costs um, to cover different. There are different uh, rules proposed to go. Uh, it's just a, an information. Uh, if you're interested or if you want details, that should be a specific topic. But it means that on top priority, the the issues associated to that uh, to that epic will be taken on, um, on the most priority item for the three upcoming weeks. The goal being trying to decrease the cost as soon as possible. Okay, but but and I had misinterpreted the number. You said fifteen, as in ten plus five, not fifty, yeah. as in five times ten. No, no, fifteen. Sorry, fifteen. Perfect. 15. Okay, I just I just heard incorrectly and thought, oh my sake, no, five I... x increased our spend. No, 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 no. I may, have, I may have pronounced fifty percent increased our spend at least, and that's still too much. Okay. Yeah, good. exactly. So we, as I mentioned. Most of the cost is related to CI, the Jenkins IO, because we are using the Amazon account um, to, to run uh, jobs there. Um, and we are now trying to investigate the best way to reduce the cost, either reducing costs for other services, such as package the Jenkins IO, or better use um, agents. And so, no, and that's really the beginning of the, the efforts. Sorry, Mark. And, and should should ideas go into that ticket? Where would you like ideas discussed? I had just. I had think I would, I would I would I would prefer to 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 have discussion in the tickets. Um, okay, great. Since since yep. Damien already did a lot of work to to explain everything there, I Excellent. think it's just better to continue yep. there. And a special thank for Jesse Glick to help us. Uh, he gave us reminders, ideas, and the double. It tend to double check most of the changes we do on the CI port. So that's really cool. Because here the, the purpose is either to use the right size of the infrastructure or maybe to optimize the way we trigger jobs. I mean, every ID is um, yeah. are welcome. We, we already stage. have a set of seven issues that can be taken in the upcoming weeks that will for sure decrease uh, the cost. And we already worked during the past 10 days on elements that will have a direct impact. Um, while, while we are, any last question regarding the cost. So while we are discussing on Amazon costs, I would like to continue the, the, the discussion of, uh, about packets, I think it's like your machine. Um, because yeah, because that's not so. Package Jenkins IO is the machine which hosts the service updates to Jenkins IO package to Jenkins IO and Mirror to Jenkins CI.R, which is deprecated. Um, as a reminder, this machine is not synchronized with Puppet anymore, so it became a snowflake. And because we are looking at the cost on Amazon, we also know that that machine is just oversized. So we can either reduce the size of the machine or just move it to a different cloud provider. Um, so we Order, are looking at, yeah. sorry. The, sorry. Costs, the cost of the machine is not that much. The cost of the outbound transfer from that machine is a lot. Uh, that machine emits 50 terabytes. So I said 50, like five O. 
terabyte per month of outbound data, which is almost 4K per month in the AWS bill. So it does not represent the major cost in the Amazon account, but the cost is still significant to find a better solution for that service. Um, so we started looking at it with Damien. Sorry, yeah. So, so this machine is today a snowflake, and in the future we'd like it to be. To be we we could consider separating the services out. That's one of the idea. Okay, that's great. one of the idea. Um, the, the reason for that is because that machine is really critical for the Jenkins project uh, because um, that's where we package artifacts. We are currently maintaining mostly by hand, uh, which is, I mean, not really comfortable, and it represents a cost. Um, so just to give an idea, because of the because of the network bandwidth that happened on that machine, we have to use a pretty big machine. Um, like 62, 64 uh, gigabyte of RAM, I can't remember. But in the end, it's mainly an Apache machine. So the machine is just way oversized for what it's doing, except that uh, the, the, the network bandwidth. So we definitely have some optimization to do there on top of yeah, better managing it. So that's something that we'll start looking in the coming weeks uh, to see how we can improve. But it's, yeah, it's always, it's all related to the Amazon costs. Um, next topic that I think Damien uh, put in the agenda, which is a uh, traffic ingress controller. Um, so we had some recent activities um, on GitHub where Joseph Peterson was interested to contribute um, to the ingress resources that we use on the Jenkins infrastructure project. As Damien mentioned, I think it would be better to start with a private um, ingress controller. I think it's, it's something that would be nice because we have to update ingress resources anyway for the next major um, communities upgrades. Um, Damien, tell me if I'm wrong. But so, yeah, that's something that we have to do now because it's it's mandatory for the next, uh, I mean, maybe not yet for the, it's not yet mandatory, but it will be needed to, for the Kubernetes version 1.22, which is coming. That, that's a topic that have been uh, proposed by Olivier and Joseph at the beginning of the year. But since uh, Joseph uh, had a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of bandwidth already taken. And because that change does not map to a direct feature to our end users, it will be more, it's a kind of investment on in the future to make us um, more portable in Kubernetes area because traffic has less uh, specific annotation. Even with the new ingress model, you still have specific uh, items. By using traffic, we'll have something that costs less in terms of uh, resources that should ease our way of managing Let's Encrypt certificate and should help us if we have to switch Kubernetes implementation. But it's only investment and it does not provide something really useful. That's why we never prioritized. And if Joseph, so Joseph was unable to attend the meeting today, but if Joseph is willing to work on that, uh, that could be a cool contribution. And the, so the idea is, yeah, let him walk and see uh, if we have a nice outcome and if we are able to switch from Nginx to traffic, at least for the private ingress, meaning every service is behind the VPN for us. That will be the next milestone and we can do a retrospective once we are there. So as a reminder, I just want to show what, what we mean by uh, updating the, Nginx, the ingress resources. So let's say, let's take this one. I think we have an ingress template here. Um, ingress. So, yeah, it's not really useful, uh, not as much as I wanted to show you, but we are, so the idea is just, we are still using um, the old annotation for the ingress resource and we have to update to, to the new one um, anyway. So we can take that opportunity to switch to, to traffic. That's the idea. Um, we are currently running Kubernetes 1.19. We have an upgrade to 1.20 coming pretty soon. The thing is, the this annotation, this uh, uh, this uh, structure, um, this ingress resource is deprecated in version one point twenty two. So that's what I mean by, I mean we we'll have to work on it uh, sooner it's than not, later. Yeah, it's not completely deprecated, as I understand. It's the version of the API that allows additional objects 
uh, next to the ingress. But the ingress okay. rule still exists. It's just it okay. might change on its structure and it's a breaking type change. Okay. Um, next topic that I put to add to the agenda, I'm not sure if it's something that should be discussed here or um, during the governance meeting, but considering the recent um, priority change, I'm just wondering if we should just update the roadmap to, to highlight um, the work that we need to do on the Amazon accounts. And also something that we totally forgot, that I forgot to mention regarding the Amazon accounts. Um, we need to reduce the cost. That's one of the um, things that we need to do. But there is a second thing, which is transfer that Amazon account to the CDF. Because right now, that account is maintained by Clubbees. So Clubbees is paying the bill, which means that in order to access that account, you need to be a Clubbees employee. Um, so it's not really convenient to collaborate with non-cloud biz employees um, on that account, and cloud biz is interested to not be responsible for that account anymore um, as well. So that's why it will become yeah a priority for us. Right. And a special thanks to Hervé and Mark for updating the roadmap with items that have been done in the past months or being done. So thanks, because uh, that's an important way of communicating outside. And we totally forgot about doing that in the past month. So thanks for that. That's really important. Next topic is about triaging issues. Uh, so we have quite a lot of issues in uh, the Jira projects. We started this week, um, I mean, we started several weeks ago, but more this week closing all tickets. So if you have some time, um, that's really useful to just go to the open ticket and just close those that are not relevant anymore. Um, yeah, we are, we are closing as much as we can, um, but we still have a lot, of, a lot to do. And still on the issue topic, um, we got access to the GitHub issues. So we have access to the beta GitHub issues. Um, so we can now have a project um, across every Git repositories. I mean, that, that was already the case in the past, but um, we just have access to more feature. I'm not really familiar with the new, the, new, the new feature. So I still have to play a little bit with that. But yeah, if you, if you are comfortable with, um, with it, um, some, some feedback would be greatly appreciated. And also on the issue triage, something that Olivier van der Heij uh, discussed this morning is that we saw we had we use and we still have a lot of uh, support like issue from end user uh, that ends up on the infra project in Jira, mostly because we don't really provide on Jira to a user opening a new issue uh, an easy pass that's that's clearly underlined that infra project is only aimed at the Jenkins infrastructure. That's why most of the users um, might end up here. For instance, with the recent project being put on the top of the drop down when creating an issue. If a issue, if an, a user visited a few hours ago an infra issue, then the next creates form will direct them to infra. So if anyone has the skills or knowledge on Jira, uh, to help us on something we could do on that, that will help a lot the issue triage and that will help a lot people opening issues because most of the time we they have to wait for us to pick the issue and see. So there could be an improvement there for our end users that report issues there. Yeah, mo most of the time we have a lot of people opening issues that are not, I mean, which are that have nothing to do with infra, and and from time to time we we see someone who's I mean not knowledgeable about the Jenkins project and still open issues in the wrong project. So that's why we are thinking that maybe it's not I mean clear enough. Um, the last topic that I have to the agenda, so which is I see a lot of discussions about Algolia and Doc Search. There is something that I don't understand because Algolia is sponsoring the Jenkins project for plugins at Jenkins.io. So we have like 1,000 credits that we can use, and it's used in the plugins, um, plugins at Jenkins.io. But how does that work for Jenkins.io? 
Yeah, so it, there are two very different approaches and for, for very, for what I think are valid reasons that they are different. Um, Algolia offers a, pro, a, a product to open source projects called DocSearch. And that product will index a site and then all the open source project does is inserts a JavaScript snippet into their pages and that makes the uh, search accessible. Um, so we didn't even have to have an account with Algolia in order to use their doc search. And in fact, we don't have any control over their doc search configuration directly. Uh, they, they decide how it's done and they decide what they index, et cetera. What we did today was open a support ticket to see if they're willing to extend what it could, what it, what it indexes. Okay, that makes sense. Now, plugins.jenkins.io is different, and they recommended actually that it remain different. They recommended it be different because plugins.jenkins.io is largely data driven, and because it's data driven, a text based indexing system isn't as effective. We need the ability to tune it. And so Gavin maintains that and does a very good job of watching the search results. When we get a high hit rate on missed searches, he'll tune it to, to assure that people who ask that question get an answer. Okay, thank you. So while I was in the um, Algolia accounts, I just invited Tim in and Hervé this morning. So Great. we have more people yeah. there. Well, and love to have more people looking at the at the search results. I've been reading them each month when Gavin sends them out, and it's it's good insights that are offered by their search engine. Angolia, oh, it's so much more. Angolia, what kind of information do we have there? I must admit that I don't often go to that interface. Um, any last topic that you want to discuss? The site, the Algolia site will only show us plugins, right? So you yes. will see this here, but it only shows plugins. And already on plugins, we easily use half of our allowed quota every month. So it's it's actually we're making very good use of it. Which is great. It is. It's it's really it's a it's an it's been an excellent result for us and I think for Jenkins users. Total user, total search. Yeah, so that allows us to know, yep. That's pretty cool. Well, and it reminds us things like how we should keep investing in, in documentation on those some of those key top items, Docker and Kubernetes. And so they, they, it's worth it. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Um, then I propose to stop the meeting here. Have a great weekend. Bye. Goodbye.